Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Hey guys, just a quick addendum. I hope that you can join me in wishing Brenton Verlo a happy birthday in the comments. He is one of my tier 4 patrons and has been supporting the channel for a long time. Now back to the fiction. Story number one. Harry Potter and the First Law of Thermodynamics. Written by Skank Hunt. Chapter one. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed. It can only change forms. Said Hermione, her recollection of Muggle studies was perfect as usual. Nonsense, Ron interjected. We use magic to eat kettles all the time. The Muggles can't create energy, but we surely can. Harry's deeply contemplative expression faded as he addressed his friends. What, um, if Hermione is right, but we just don't know where the energy comes from. Like how people thought the sun was a gift from the god before modern physics debunked that. Hermione interrupted, completing the thought. Exactly, said Harry, and I think I know just how to get to the bottom of this. Chapters 2 to 33 are unavailable in this preview. Chapter 34 Harry tried his best not to throw up, but it was in vain. He could feel the remnants of Dursley's pudding leaking from the sides of his mouth. Ron and Hermione were no better off, but looked like they had rather be dead. Oh, not dead, not after what they saw. Hand us, hand us now, please. A million voices squealed in unison. Erebus was the amorphous blob of dead wizarding souls that stretched from horizon to horizon. Harry could recognize the silhouettes of the newly dead at the periphery of the blob. All the souls were less distinct and looked like clay effigies. Harry cringed as he thought about how every one of his spells erased someone's features. The older souls were simply unthinking stumps which was rather merciful end after enduring centuries of unspeakable pain. Now you know, Dumbledore said gravely, young fool, you could have just walked away, but you didn't. Now you must live your life knowing what awaits you beyond the grave. This was my burden, but now it is yours too. No! Harry shouted, it's better to die than to live like this. I will end this. Dumbledore stared at Harry solemnly. The mightiest wizards have tried before, but they have all failed for the same reason. To destroy Erebus, you must draw energy from Erebus, and Erebus won't allow that. This is a fundamental moat of wizardry. It is better to live with Erebus's gifts than to die fighting it. With a wry smile, Harry responded. The Muggles also had a moat they called the First Law of Thermodynamics. They had stated that energy can neither be created nor destroyed, only changed. Then one clever Muggle learned how to create energy from matter, and the law had to be rewritten. I don't understand, Dumbledore responded. What do muggle laws have to do with Erebus? Simple, Harry said, turning to the large crate he insisted on bringing. It was featureless save for a prominent knife switch. We don't need Erebus to destroy Erebus. All we need is some goddamn E equals MC squared, courtesy of my good friend Comrade Putin. Harry pulled the switch, triggering the priming charge on the authentic Soviet-era military surplus Tsar bomb in an instant and with a blinding flash of light. Harry, Ron, Hermione, Dumbledore, and Erebus ceased to exist. End of story. Story number two. Perspective of the Missing, written by Alt Cipher. Mike stumbled down the stairs, still half asleep. He tried sleeping in, but his bladder wouldn't let him. As he walked into the kitchen, he heard the TV flipping between channels. You're up early, Mike said to his house guest as he crossed the kitchen. 
he made a beeline to the coffee pot. You know, when I pulled you out of that wreckage, I didn't know you'd be up at sunrise every morning. He took a deep drink of his morning coffee, feeling the hot fluid sluice its way down his throat and warming his belly. Have I angered you? The spindly green alien with too many arms sitting at Mike's kitchen table said. No, Squiddy, Mike said, just giving you a hard time. He set his coffee down and began rummaging through the cabinets for his breakfast. What are you watching over there? It's your news programs, from what I can tell, Squiddy said. There are many variations on them, but they all seem to have a constant themes. Mike paused and his head sagged. Yeah, he said. Yeah, there are. Look, um, you got, um, I don't know what it's like on your world, but we, uh, we have problems. We're trying to fix them, honestly, but, um, it's, it's something that, um, your world is so peaceful, Squiddy said. What? Your world is peaceful, Squiddy said, much louder this time. Sure, other than the wars and the violent crimes and the abuse and all the other horrible things we do to each other. It's real peaceful here on Earth, Mike said. I had been watching these um, programs of yours for many hours now. Is hours the right word? Yes, but go on, Mike said, as he poured the last of the cereal into a bowl. Anyway, I was watching these programs, and they spend so much time on so very little. A man hurt a woman, a handful of soldiers were killed, a politician lied, a business is taking another business to court. Workers are marching on the employer, Squiddy said. Yeah, those are pretty typical headlines, Mike said as he poured the milk into his bowl. There's probably a bunch more things that they never cover. Dozens of crimes in every major city, other things that only affect a couple of people and aren't important enough to anyone else. Mike made his way over to the table with his coffee and his bowl of cereal. That's my point, Squiddy said. That's all there is, and most of that just gets repeated and analyzed and commented on. The whole of your news could be digested in the time it takes you to eat that meal. Mike stopped with the spoon halfway to his mouth dripping milk into the bowl below him. After pausing for a moment, he finished his bite and thought. When he swallowed, he said, The news is full of terrible things happening every day. And that is a wonderful thing, Squiddy said. That makes no sense, Mike said. My friend, I thank you for rescuing me, but you do not see the same world that I do, Squiddy said. On my world, the news is full of stories about my people helping one another, rescuing small animals, random strokes of good luck, and nothing but tales meant to uplift and inspire. That sounds amazing, Mike said. I can see why you'd judge us. Sounds like you guys live in paradise. No, Squiddy said. That's the point. Allow me to pose a question. When was the last time you saw a news story about the sun rising? What do you mean? I mean, when was the last time one of these reporters went outside and talked for several minutes about the sun coming up at dawn? When was the last time your news stations brought in some kind of expert to talk about sunrise? How many times did they spend an entire time period on discussing the sun coming up over the horizon? Well, uh, never, I guess, Mike said. His cereal was finished, and he was sipping on the last of his coffee. I mean, um, why would they? Exactly, Squiddy said. Why would they? There is nothing interesting about the sun rising. It's done so for billions upon billions of years. It should continue to do so for billions of more. At least if your sun is anything like most other life-hosting systems in the galaxy. Anyway... It is mundane. It is boring. There is no news in saying that the sun rose this morning. Okay, Mike said. But what does that have to do with your world being so much better than mine? Because for each of us, Squiddy said, the things that make the news are exceptional, rare, unique. Those things that are routine or commonplace or expected are never in the news. On my world, there is so much death and violence that our news reports are filled with nothing but happiness and light. 
Stories which inspire hope are so few and far between that they are, by definition, worthy of being reported. It is only rare things that are interesting, and hope is very rare on my world. That doesn't... Okay, I can maybe see where you're coming from, Mike said. But still, we got plenty of bad things happening here. Wait, Squiddy said, look. The story has been on the news quite a lot since I started watching. Some local politician has been accused of some sort of corruption, from what I gather. Mike watched the news story for a few minutes. Oh, yeah, that guy, he said. Yeah, they were building something or the other, and he steered the selection towards a company that he had stock in, or something. I haven't really been following it closely. See, that's my point, Squiddy said. A corrupt politician is so unique here that it has consumed fully 15% of every news period I've seen. 15%! On my world, we know our politicians are corrupt, and only the most heinous crimes make it to the news. But here, here a man simply slightly benefited himself, and they are making it look like it's the worst of your species since he crawled out of the oceans. He betrayed the public trust, Mike said. He should go to jail for it. Sure, whatever the appropriate punishment is for such a thing in your society, Squiddy said. But it's still news. Look how many of these stories don't even involve death. I've been monitoring these reports for hours, and only a scant handful are about anyone dying. Even then, it's only a few people. I haven't seen one casualty list over ten people the entire time. On my world, it takes at least two or three hundred to be considered exceptional. Your world is starting to sound like some kind of hellhole, Mike said. No offense. I may argue with your phrasing, Squiddy said, but I cannot argue with your sentiment. At least, not when I compare it to the world you come from. A world like this. I would expect you to see my home as a place of misery and suffering. Not everyone is as lucky as you to live in such a paradise. I mean, uh, I wouldn't call it a paradise, Mike said. I can believe you would not, Squiddy said. What I see is that bad things count as exceptional and good things count as ordinary. And even bad things aren't that bad. You don't have your people dying by the hundreds or the thousands. You don't have your people being preyed upon by an outside race. You don't have your people being ravaged by disease. Your world is better than you give it credit for. If only you would notice it. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.